Friday Night Flies. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have a mustache again? Do you want me to put one on it? I can put one on I'll try not to wiggle. Okay, let's just see if I can keep it here. Oh, now you got you put me on the spot, and I'm trying to find all my stuff here. Google Where's my mustache? Trying is loading it now. Oh, there we go. Hold on. We've got headwear. We've got. Oh, we'll put some sunglasses on your teeth. Is it blind? Oh, oh yeah, that's a good look right there. Is that, is it, teeth. Is that, is that <laughs> how it goes? It's right tight right here. Like this. It's right tight right in here. Yeah, right there. You got it. Perfect. So what do we? <laughs> so it's Friday night flies. That's right. <laughs> we're back. Yes, and we're excited to be back. I've had a facial. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, um, what are we doing? <laughs> what are we doing? We're time flies. It's Friday. <laughs> um, um, in all seriousness, I'm trying to steal a fly. Yeah. Um, so, with all the shenanigans, yeah, it's Friday Night Flies. We're here at Spud Valley Sporting Goods. This is also brought to you by Pemberton Fish Finder. We talk trout. And I'm Boulder. I say I love the tug. And uh, that tug, too. Um, <laughs> so let's go down to the fly. <laughs> well, okay, okay. Let's just go down. <laughs> we can put the mustache back later. We will. Don't worry. Okay, there you go. Hey, Giuseppe! I wonder if I could put a mustache on that fly. I wonder. It would probably try to. I'll try. So yeah. this is our nice steelhead fly <laughs> that we're doing today. Bam. That is called the Purple Haze. Purple Haze. Ah, yeah. I'm very excited about swinging this one with See, the spay rod. The thing with Purple Haze, though, is that it needs drugs. the UV element. It does. And that doesn't. Well, this is uh, UV polar bear. Ah, there you go. We do have the UV. UV2 element. polar Thank bear God. right there. But there's a lot of flash going on, so we got something. And they are uh, UV eyes as well. So, enough playing slide here. We're going to open up question and answer because I know my good friend Sean Mooney's going to be, he's probably already plucking at the keyboard wondering, why, 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 why? Can't I ask them questions or tell them something? <laughs> right? We need him to be able to do that. All right. So, we're starting off with our Waddington shaft. It's a 35 mil. Get it in the vise. Oh, we're going to get our thread on there. I'm just using. Uh, Six aught black. And when we're tying this on, we want to make sure that we're keeping these parallel. Helps turn your vise on the side like this so that when you're pulling it tight, that it uh, snugs up on each other. Get rid of that. And we want to make sure we get this gap here. Helps to just put a little pressure down, close it up. And work it to the front. Why don't we have the cap? Why don't they just make it solid? I don't know. It's probably cheaper to just bend the metal. And you have a starting and an end for it, right? So I got my braided, uh, waxed braided stinger line here. And uh, <laughs> thanks to the flow tank, I've realized that uh, a lot of my trailing hooks that I've been making have been way too long. So I'm going to shorten this up. A little bit. So. Okay, so Sean Mooney says, need a middle hackle. There you go with the polar bear again. I'm taking my toys and going home. <laughs> Sorry, Sean. Yeah. <laughs> I likes my polar bear, and I bought a whole whack of it. And he's showing it off. I'm showing it off. Um, yeah, I don't know. You can get other materials that, uh, that you could substitute for. Like calf tail. Yeah. Calf tail's good. Yeah. That's a good one. It's a little bit, it's not quite as uh, tapered. There's synthetics to replace polar bear. I'm tying this on the wrong side, which is um, craft fur. So that's your, your synthetic replacement for polar bear. Craft fur. That come, doesn't sound near as good. Eh? Cra craft fur. It's not craft fur. You know what I've used? Craft okay, sorry, sorry. Just, craft fur. What's well a craft fur? It might as well be craft fur. Polar fear. All right. For, so, for the fear, fear. while we were chit chatting about the polar bear, there, there we go. So I got my my braided line. Fish it through the the back of the hook. Fasten it on the bottom. Notice I've inverted my hook here, so we're tying this along the bottom. Get your float tank still flowing, boys. It's still flowing. 
The flow tank is right phenomenal. to the back. Be careful of that notch that you got there that you don't snap your thread off on it. Get it back to the front of your eye. You're going to fish the remainder of your stinger thread through. Are you swimming that fly? No, no. It's all right. You can uh, empty the tank. Dumper, buddy. Dumper. And then secure this down. So now that trailing hook thread is going nowhere. And we're on there nice and tight. And this time I'm going to remember to put in my weighted eyes. At the beginning. At the beginning where you should. Doesn't really matter, I don't think. So I'm going to put these on here, figure eight them. And I am uh, keeping them, you know, fairly far back. It's about the same distance the eye same width as the eye that I'm leaving a gap here because I do want to put a little bit of head in there and again I'm doing a little Friday night fly mistake because I'm trying to talk about what I'm doing and not thinking about what I'm doing I feel like a Bir Birkenhead Benny on here <sighs> one night there we again go soon. so tie them on the bottom so your fly rides upright and it would be nice to have Burke and Benny come in it's been about a year since he's been in to do this eh? Yeah, he's just too cool, man. Too cool for school. Busy with the kids. Yeah, I know. That's the thing with family life. Oof. Man. All right. I host this, this show just to freaking get out of the house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but if the show takes too long, you start getting those phone calls. Oh, yes. All right. So we got the eyes on the bottom where they're supposed to be so that your fly rides upright. Otherwise, it's going to tend to flip over. And we're going to start building this thing. So we're starting with the tail section, which is the white polar bear. And we're going to be putting quite a few materials together to make these tails. So you don't want to grab too much. First couple that I made, made the mistake of grabbing, being a little overzealous with the uh, amount of fabric material that I put on there. So I just want a little, little clump of polar bear. Get it right on top of the shank. Get that tied in. I'm just going to get rid of some of that stub. Next, I'm going to the purple UV2 polar bear. Now let's find me a nice piece here. And I'm using just a little bit, a fraction more. Hold your long ends and get rid of all this short. So that's that's your, your polar dub right there. Save so, that. So if you, if you want to save it and send it to Sean, then... Uh, well, you can't even send it to Sean. That's true. So we got our, our purple. Now we're going to tie it right in on top of that white polar bear. Bingo. Next... We're going to go, uh, actually, I'm going to do that after. Where's my, there we go. Got my holographic fire tiger. That's nice stuff, too. So I take one thread, one strand, fold it in half, grab these ends so they're the same, nip it in half. So basically, your end result is you have four pieces on each side. I'm going to tie a clump on one side and, and another one on the opposing side. So I'll start with the one facing me. And I want this to be on the side of the fly, not on the top of all the polar bear. So that's in there. All right, tips together. Oh, come on. The other one worked so well. There we go. Hold it over. Tie those tips right in on the side of the fly. All right. I'm just going to loosely secure all that stuff down there. And then last for the tail, grab some of this 
ostrich. I want about four or five strands. Can you get hey Sean? Can you get Rhea down in, in uh, the states? Oh yeah. I yeah. So. Is it on the endangered list? I don't think it is. No, it's not. So we want these uh, pieces. I want the chips to be fairly the same, yeah. ending at the same spot. I like to make this ostrich just a fraction longer than the rest of it. It's way better. And so get it tied in right on top. A polar bear rug off of eBay. No. Well, yeah. Probably not. Get rid of that stuff. Next, we're ready for the body, which is this blue pearl chenille. So I'm just going to take off, pull off some of it so it exposes the thread so that I can attach it in. Yeah, it's just you can't do it. And then we're going to take this thread all the way up to behind the eyes. I like to just fold it over. It helps secure it there. Here, Sean um, says, he says, uh, do you lose much flash? I was taught to always tie, have the amount in the middle, and fold a little synthetic flash that way. Then it, then it has to break. What's your answer to that? I'm confused. What? He just said uh, um, he was taught to always tie, have the amount in the middle, and fold all synthetic flash that way. Oh. I still don't know. Anyhow. Have yeah. the flash in the middle of the fly? Yeah. Yeah, to have the flash in the middle of the fly. Um, there are a lot of flies that are designed that way, and then uh, that's the way I started doing it, is having my flash material on the inside. And then lately I've been seeing a lot of flies where they're just putting, putting a little hint on the sides of the flies. On the outside. On on the outside. Just on the outside of the fly. So I've been... Uh, Trying that, and then uh, and it's then been working. We'll have to see uh, how they fish. Really, I guess it's supposed to kind of like pick up a little bit of the glint, like it's the lateral lines on the fish. So that's why I've been I've been trying it. Um, yeah, I do have flies that are tied in both ways, but yeah, it's true. The majority of the time, um, especially with dry flies, you see all the flashes hidden deep inside. But I'm seeing a lot of a lot of streamer patterns these days coming out with the flash just on the outsides. So I figured I'd give it a shot. And then we're going back to this wing, and we're kind of doing the uh, same process. So we're starting with the white, and we're going to go a little heavier this time. And I'm tying this all in right behind the eye. So we got the whites. Well, and we're going to make sure we choose some long purple fibers from the polar bear or your craft fur. <laughs> Sean's got another. Uh, Sean's got another one for you. He says, "No, have the flash folded over the thread, tie oh, it down in the yes. middle, and fold it back." Yes, I I do see a lot like that, but uh, with how small of a tag in that I had, I guess. If you have troubles getting those little ends to get fastened in, then by all means. And uh, so I'll grab a piece of flash here. I know exactly what Sean's talking about. It's the way that I told Scotty Holmes how to do his uh, his rubber <laughs> legs. You wrap is you do this, yeah. and then do one wrap, and then fold it over and tie it in. Um, that's a very easy way to do it. Um, for people that are starting, that's probably the best way to do it. But uh, as you can see, I have no trouble just getting getting the little tip caught under my thread and tying it in. So I don't think it really matters too much. In terms of strength, I think it's equally strong both ways. Yeah? Depends how many wraps you're putting on, right? Um, yeah, if you're getting towards an area where you have minimal uh, room to work with, so you only have, like, right on the head. like at the head, yeah. <laughs> you can only do maybe one or two turns. Um, then you definitely want to hook it underneath your thread first. But when it's at the tail there, 
I got a good amount of wraps on there. It's not going to be coming out. We're talking about steelhead flies, though. <clears throat> they don't last that long. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they really so, don't. Next, I'm going to my chartreuse angel hair. No matter what you're doing, though. And no. I'm going to... Uh, you're not going to take a pat one pattern through. Put a little flash on each side of this. You're gonna, it's going to be gone. If, if you don't catch any fish with it, and you leave it on the bottom, it's going to be gone. Way it's gone. So I'm going to try to pump on one side. Oh, well, that's, I mean, a lot of them down. I'm going to get rid of the tag. And I'm going to trim these fibers so they're the same length. It sure looks so much better on video than it does live, eh? Like, yeah, when you go back and watch it. Oh, yeah. All right, I got another little clump here. I'm going to tie it on the opposing side. So, this is... Do a nice couple wraps, so that's all secure. Need to trim up this side here. So I just kind of scale it along. I mean, that pattern would be good for bull trout, salmon. Pretty well, anyway. I'll right. probably smoke chum and coho. And then to finish off the wing, we're going back to the ostrich here. And again, I want about four or five of these strands. Uh, I think maybe I got six this time, whatever. These ones are pretty thin. So for this top one, you can see how they all kind of go everywhere. You really want to try and get them so that they're all following the same curvature. I've got one that's really, really long. And I want all my tips to kind of meet up. Yet not. And I make this one just just shy from the back. All right, so that's in there, right on top. And then the top one, what I like to do is just move it around so that they're spread evenly over the top. Helps them fan out a little bit and helps them to breathe when they're uh, flowing in the water. Get rid of those tags. Now we're going to go back to our blue pearl chenille. Just going to tie this in. I'm going to get a couple wraps over all this tail ends and bring my thread to the front. And then I'm going to finish this off. By going around the eyes here, looks good. create a little bit of a head. One more, there we go. Get rid of that. You can use it as a tropical fly too. <laughs> whip finish. So, whip finish tools, last but not least. I'd like to try that in Anderson Lake. Trolling. You got a flash or something? It's going to be deadly. Get rid of the thread. So, how's it look on that side? Pretty good. And then all you need to do is attach your, your stinger hook on the back of your stinger wire and you're ready to fish. Nice. And uh, this thing in the flow tank flows like crazy. This thing really swims around back and forth. Super nice. Sean says nice finish. I save it. Did I save it? <laughs> I must save. You just had to wait till we got to the end. Okay, so we're going going up top. So that's our fly for tonight. This Friday night flies on boulders and love the tug. Where are you going to use that fly? Where am I going to use this one? Um, well, I heard the uh, Lillooet is closed now. 
for the steel head. Yeah. It's the Fraser. So uh, I might have to go down to Squamish or I might have to go and try and find somebody down in Vancouver who knows the local waters down there because the steelhead should be coming in. Other than that, uh, we know a little secret spot that we like to go to on the uh, <laughs> slow cat. <laughs> uh, I would love to try and get out there after the snow's kind of packed down a little bit and the road's accessible. So that's where I'm going. The big water. Big yeah. rivers. Anyhow? Yeah, that's Scotty it. That's all I got. That's it for uh, tonight, too. We're done. So join us next week. Um, for all of those of you that join us regularly, like Sean and Vic, thank you for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time. Send your photos in of some of your flies. Okay. That'd be nice. Yeah. And then Brad can, if you email them to Brad on, uh, what is it, info at info info.com. Yeah. Email us some of your photos of your flies that you're tying at home, and uh, we can always plug them in there as we're tying next week. It's all good. All right. Peace. Thanks for watching.